but you know they're flesh colored. Um, I don't know. No, I don't know what they were, but I know this: there, there were, there was a whole wall full of aquariums, and there were maybe two dozen in various sizes, from the size of shrimp up to the size of puppies. And there were larger containers that were empty that had no pink water in them. Yeah, now, so we have to, now the the bigger accommodate a human being. That's what I was going to ask you if they would accommodate the human being. Now our time is starting to really click here fast. Well, how do you remember how they they put you back into the tent, or were you conscious, or were you you know in a daze, uh, or how? What do you remember about that? What I remember was a, a flash of light, and we were dumped. I mean, I I felt like I hit the ground from about three feet, like I was dropped from about three feet, and. I landed by, we were next to one another, and we were by my car. And I remember thinking, man, somebody screwed up. They, they should put us back in our tent. And sure enough, and I'm barely conscious. I'm just barely conscious at this point. Um, the little gray guys, there were four of them at least. Um, and they're strong. And they picked us up and they carried us into the tent. And just kind of unceremoniously threw us into the tent. That's probably how you got your, your shoes on wrong and your socks on wrong. Now, you wake up in the morning. You, you, you guys decide, I'm getting out of here. You leave everything al- uh, there, right? And you, you bail yes. out. Now, when you get back to the base and you get back to the hospital, uh, who did you notify? And what were you scared to notify? Whose idea was it to notify? You know, I, I knew this. I knew that I had to go to the hospital. Uh, my wife, um, we've been married now 45 years. My wife said, you know, you're, you're, you're sick. Something's wrong with you. I mean, I had this sunburn on the soles of my feet. I mean, every square inch of my body was burnt. And uh, I was photophobic. I mean, I, I just squinting. I wanted to wear sunglasses or something. I wanted to be in a dark room. And uh, she took me to the hospital. And, uh, you know, we were from the hospital squad. And, and, you know, hospital people take care of their own. So they they, they took pretty good care of us. Uh, But what they did do was they separated us. And uh, while I was in the emergency room being treated, the base commander not the hospital commander, but the base commander came in with the hospital commander and told me, he said, Sergeant Lovelace, you're to have no contact with Sergeant Tobias. Do you understand? That means no notes, no phone calls, no contact through third parties, uh, no telephone calls, nothing. You're to have no contact with him. Do you understand me, Sergeant? And I said, yes, sir. But I really didn't understand. I mean, I didn't get it, you know. This guy's my friend. Why, why you know. And, you know, we were changed. We were, we were different human beings after this event. Uh, for some reason, I, I didn't want to be around the guy, to be honest with you. I, I, it's like a reminder of a bad experience. You know, you'd think you would come out of this experience, your friendship would be stronger and you'd be... Uh, you know, it would be different, but but it wasn't like that. It was it was odd. It was um, it was creepy. I um, hearing this guy was my best friend, and uh, I really didn't want anything to do with him. So the no contact order was no problem. Interesting. Now, that's when, he, when did the, the guys with the suits come in? Well, the, I was the third day that I was in a hospital. The two OSI agents came in, and OSI stands for Office of Special Investigations. That's the Air Force's um, investigative branch of the security police. OSI is to the Air Force what NCIS is to the Navy, if that makes sense. And um, my third night in the hospital, I knew I was going home the next day. They had the lights turned off. 
and in the room because my eyes were still still photophobic and it was hard to read uh hard to hard to keep my you know light hurt my eyes and my nurse came in and two guys in business suits followed her in and these guys were cops i mean you you know you could tell they were cops they had to their blue suit coats were open and you could see the shoulder holsters and they had the swagger and the, um, you know, the, there's, there's a posture that, of authority that they, that they, uh, that they portray. I mean, they, they just look like policemen to me, you know? And I mean, I was a pretty straight kid. I'd never been in any kind of trouble in my life. I didn't know, um, but I knew I knew these guys were cops. And they showed us their IDs. They had badges and uh, military IDs. The older guy was a major. He's the one that did the talking. The younger guy was a captain, and he didn't say much. And they, uh, the, 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 the older guy read me my rights under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the UCMJ. And uh, I looked at him, and I said, sir, am I in some kind of trouble? And I'm, my mind's racing, and I'm thinking, my God, did we burn the forest down or something? And this guy said, and he had this Louisiana accent, you know, like Calvin Parker, and he said, son, would we be here if you weren't in trouble? Oh, and the wow. captain just cracks up at that. He thought that was funny as hell. So, so they, they asked you a bunch of questions. What made yeah. him uh, put you under with, uh, uh, you know, basically liquid LSD to ask you these questions? What uh, was it? Uh, could you have refused it or did they demand that you have to go under that? Well, here's here's what happened was when these two guys were in my room, this guy swooped everything, major swooped everything off my side table and he laid out forms in front of me. And there were like five or six forms. And I couldn't read them if I wanted to. I mean, my eyes were so, um, and he turned the overhead lights on. And I said, sir, could you please turn those lights out or hurt my eyes? They hurt my eyes. And he says, can't work in the dark, son. Got to see what we're doing. And he lays out these forms in front of me and hands me a pen and says, son, these are waivers and consents. These give us the right to take a look in your uh, in your house in your car. Now I got to preface this before before he does this. What he does is he says, you know, you boys left your campsite intact down there. That tells me you plan to come back. Now, do you guys got a little marijuana plot out there? Is that what this is all about? And that really scared me because 1977. I mean, growing a little marijuana plot would put you in Leavenworth. And I was I was scared to the bone, and I and he said, you know, you, you don't have a big bag of marijuana in your house, do you? And I said, no, sir. He says, you don't have anything in your house that you shouldn't have, do you? And I said, no, sir. He said, well, then you wouldn't mind if we take a look around just just to make sure. Does that be okay with you? And I said, yes, sir. You know, today I'd say, you know. Get a search warrant, but you know I'm 22 years old. What am I, you know, what am I going to say? I'm thinking that if I, if I, I mean, I got nothing to hide. Uh, I'm not going to tell them I saw. Well, I, know, I, I was say, craft. Terry, back in 1977, if they really put it this way, if you would have refused, they they probably would have planted you with something, just because that's how the military was at that time frame. Yeah, I was I was scared, and I think that was I think in retrospect that was probably the right position to take was to be cooperative. So I signed all of these forms. One of the forms I signed was a consent to hypnotic regression with chemical enhancement or something like that. Words to that effect. Now, before this major leaves the room, the nurse and the captain left the room. But before the major left my room, uh, he shut the door, he turned the light off, and he put his hand against the door, and my bed was right, the head of my bed was right next to the door, and he bent over next to my, my ear, and he whispers to me, he says, son, I know, and you know, you two knuckleheads 
stumbled onto something out there, didn't you? Oh, and I think you know what I mean, don't you? And I didn't answer him. And he said, all I want to know is how many pictures did you take and where is your film? Just give me the film and this will all be over. So, you know, I had a reputation on the base as being an amateur photographer. And that was kind of the purpose of this trip, was I, I wanted to photograph some wildlife because, you know, I had this nice camera, but I'm living on a nuclear base and I can't use it, you know. <laughs> i got to get off base to use my camera. So I think, I don't know how they knew, but he knew. He absolutely knew. Now, four weeks later, maybe five weeks later, I get summoned to the OSI headquarters, and that's when they take me into an interrogation room. And that's when they had the, the, the two OSI agents were there, and that's when the hypnotist came. Uh, he was a major. He had oak leaves on his collar, but no name tag. And he came into the interrogation room. It was a standard interrogation room, you know, with a with a, the mirror that's framed in the wall. It's obviously a, a two-way affair. I mean, who's going to be grooming themselves in the interrogation room? And he has this little like a shaving kit under his arm. And he sets it down on the table and opens it up and takes out a little towel, a syringe, a um, piece of rubber tubing, some alcohol pads, cotton swabs and the like. And he's humming to himself and he's laying this stuff all out. He says, he's talking to the agents and ignoring me. And then he turns his attention to me and... Uh, rolls his chair up right next to me, I mean, like into my personal space, and holds out his hand and said, Sergeant Lovelace, it's so nice to finally meet you. How are you? And I shook his hand and I said, I'm fine, sir. And he says, Terry, for purposes of this little exercise today, would you just call me Brad? That is my name. And I thought, boy, this is weird. This, I've never had a military officer talk to me like this. This guy carries himself like a like a priest or a therapist or something. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, uh-uh, don't you mean yes, Brad? I'm trying to get and you I comfortable. Said, yes, Brad. And then he said, and Terry, for purposes of today's little exercise, may I call you Terry? That is your name. And I said, sure, that would be okay, Brad. And uh, he says, well, you know, you're going to be hypnotized today. And I said, no, I, I didn't know that. And I said, I don't know why. Uh, and he pulls out the consent form that I signed in the hospital. And he says, isn't that your signature? He says, you know, you can withdraw your consent. And that's when the major spoke up and says, you know, you have the right to withdraw your consent. You don't have to be hypnotized today. He says, we'll just tear these forms up right now. I'll pitch them in the trash can, and we'll just see you at the court-martial. How about that? And I thought, oh, what kind of option is that? You None. Know? They didn't give you any they option. They lock me up until a court-martial, and I don't even know what I'm going to be court martial for. So I thought, you know, well, i got to roll with this. <laughs> and I... But, you know, I've been taking these psychology classes in the evening at the Extension University from Central Missouri State, and I knew that I couldn't be hypnotized against my will. So I knew I couldn't resist the drug, but the hypnosis I thought I could resist. And uh, he took me through the progressive hypnosis thing, and uh, I was in the chair kind of in a relaxed position, you know, with my head down. And uh, when when he got through with this um, hypnosis thing, uh, he gave me the injection. And he said, and you won't feel a thing. And I didn't. I didn't feel a thing. Uh, I didn't feel the, the needle stick, but I felt this warm flush and then this real pleasant feeling. And sodium amytal is a, what they call, it, it's classed as a hypnotic. And it puts you in la-la land. 
contaminated 